more in train yet. Oh, wow. Oh. Ah. Holy. One thing people always ask me is, oh. Oh. Taryn, oh. how do you stay so sexy? In all seriousness, I'm 11 days from getting vaccine number two. Just got back into hard training after a failure earlier this week and pulled off nine times, about two minutes at 310 watts. And then right at the end, 15 seconds of a big surge up around 550 watts and it hurt. So nobody asked that question, but one question that actually is asked online is, what is better for weight loss, running or cycling? And on the surface, you might think, well, running burns more calories, so it's running, or you can bike longer than you can run, so then it's biking. I think there's a whole bunch of different factors that first go into what constitutes weight loss that you want to have, and then what are the characteristics of running versus cycling, so you can help determine which is going to work best for you. I got sweat in my eyes. I got sweat right in my eyes on that last one. All right, let's talk about how to look as good as your favorite blonde, slightly chubby Canadian YouTuber. First, there's two requirements in order to cause weight loss and keep it off in a way that doesn't mess up your system long term. The first is that you do need a calorie deficit. You need to be burning off more calories than you consume. And this is very simple. You need to calculate roughly the amount of calories that you burn on a daily basis. I like using a website like MitoCalc because this is accounting for a lot of the differences between what your diet might be and what your exercise level might be. And this is going to give you roughly an idea of how many calories you are burning off throughout the day. Eat a little bit less than this, you will likely lose weight as long as you are satisfying the second condition, which is you need to have a healthy body system. Now, a lot of fitness influencers online might say that it is just strictly calories in and calories out, and only that will cause weight loss. In a very basic sense, yes, but when we talk about weight loss that is able to sustain itself for years, there is this requirement to stay healthy. So there's one fitness person online that I know really, really well. And recently I've talked to them about what they're going through right now. And they are encountering health concerns where they're training as much, if not more as they had previously, their diet hasn't changed at all. And this is somebody who eats the same just about every single day, but they went and gained about 10 to 15 pounds and are having a very hard time reducing that weight while cutting calories. This is similar to what I'm going through right now. So the cause of this might change from person to person, but it can be things like hormones not being balanced. So you're retaining a little bit of fat, which happens when your hormones get out of balance. You can have really high stress levels in your body, which tends to hold a lot of inflammation and water weight. There are a few different reasons why your body just might be clinging on to a lot of weight, but in general, you need to have an overall healthy body system. And one of the things that can cause this to not be the case is when you go on strict calorie deprivation diets where you might see a fair amount of weight loss and stay at a low weight for one, two, maybe three years, but it's something that your metabolism is eventually going to catch up with or your body systems might not function at their ideal level if you're like most people. In a lot of cases though, if you're like superhuman pros, they can get away with these things. But in a lot of cases, even pros, they tend to have times where they dip down a little bit in weight and then they come back up because they know that that's healthier. One of the first things that's different between running and cycling is the calories that you burn per hour. Remember that I said that you need a calorie deficit in order to lose weight? Well, it's going to be easier to have a calorie deficit if you are burning off more calories. Theoretically, I'll get to why that isn't necessarily the case. So what I've done here is this is a calculator that you can actually go and download. And this is going to calculate roughly how many calories you're going to burn during exercise, how many calories you need to replace for your nutrition during exercise for swim, bike, run, and 
triathlons of all different distances, sprint, Olympic, half Ironman, Ironman. You put in your details into this and it's going to give you a rough guideline of a nutrition plan for your training and your racing. You can get that by going to mymotive.com forward slash triathlon nutrition guide. You just have to put in your email address and it's free. So what I've set up here is an easy ride, a very low intensity ride. So I'm cycling roughly 27 kilometers in one hour. Now this is going to burn roughly about 816 calories. Now this isn't customized to everyone. This isn't bang on accurate. There are differences between everyone, but it's saying that I'm burning roughly 816 calories. Now let's switch this to running and let's say that I'm going for an easy run of 12 kilometers. Again, this is very, very easy, a nice light pace. So we're talking at that point, 918 calories. We're burning a little bit more. And the reason for that is that you have to carry your body weight while you are running. So that impact is causing you to use more energy to keep yourself upright. So hour per hour, roughly the same intensity for the same intensity, you're gonna burn a little bit more per minute while you are running. So that is going to help you lose a little bit of weight in theory. A second thing that we need to consider is that it isn't just about the calories that you burn during a workout. There are actually some workouts that can change the amount of calories that you're burning outside of a workout, those being HIIT workouts, high intensity interval training workouts. If you do a really hard HIIT workout, there's a process that comes after that workout called post-exercise oxygen consumption. Now, because during that HIIT workout, you're doing some of the efforts without as much oxygen as you need, your body ends up going through this process and it ramps up your metabolism in the 24 to 48 hours after the workout. So just while you're lying around and going about your daily business, after a high intensity workout, you're actually going to increase the amount of calories that you're burning just being sedentary. Now you might say, how does this end up playing into running versus cycling? Well, you can do running workouts at high intensity interval training efforts, just like you can do biking, but it becomes a little bit more ballistic and a little bit more dangerous with running. So you end up increasing the likelihood of getting an injury if you're doing too many of your high intensity interval sessions on the run. The next thing that we want to compare is the intensity that most of the exercise is done with it. More often than not, it's a lot easier for athletes to bike at a lower intensity and it's actually very hard for most athletes to run at a lower intensity. So what happens is a lot of the bike intensities that aren't really high intensity interval sessions are, you know, kind of down here. I, I kind of look at it as like high zone one, low zone two for a lot of the general rides. Whereas even the low intensity runs are right at the top of zone two and most people left to their own devices are gonna run actually at the top of zone three. So you might be saying, hey, isn't this great? Because most runs, they tend to burn a little bit more calories as it is at the same intensities, but people tend to run even at higher intensities. So you're gonna burn even more calories. And yeah, that is again, theoretically the case, but when athletes tend to exercise a lot over and over and over, when they're above their zone two threshold, what they do is they end up building up a high amount of lactic acid and stress hormones. Remember when I said at the beginning that an increase in stress hormones can lead to your body being more likely to hold onto additional weight, to inflammation, to water retention, to fat? Yeah, that's what's going to happen if you run consistently over and over above your zone two threshold. So you might be burning more calories thinking that you're gonna lose more weight, but it might be all for naught because you are going too intense more frequently on the run. The next thing is that to get long lasting healthy weight loss, you need to get a proper calorie deficit. And this means that sometimes you're in a calorie deficit, sometimes you're in a calorie surplus. And in general, you tend to trend down, but you don't have big surges in your calories. You're able to control your calories a little bit more. In my experience, running is a little bit harder to do this with because with the run, most people tend not to wanna to eat a lot before the run because it kind of tears apart their stomach if they aren't yet trained to run with food in their stomach. So in a lot of cases, people aren't eating that much before a run. Also, while athletes are running, they tend not to eat a lot because again, it's fairly difficult because they're breathing heavier and 
putting food or any sort of calories in their stomach during a run, it tends to add a little bit of discomfort, so people tend not to do it. Cycling, on the other hand, it's quite easy to eat something and then go out for a ride, and it's also quite easy to eat while you're in the middle of that workout. That calculator that we did at the beginning of the video indicated that you need to replace about 25% of your calories during the workout, and most people have no problem doing that. Now again, you might be saying, well, isn't this a good thing for running because we're gonna be burning way more calories than we're consuming? It is in theory, again, a good thing, but when we have long sustained periods of extreme calorie deprivation, which is the case when you go out for a fasted run or a run that's under fueled, what more often tends to happen is again, the body has a huge amount of stress, so it ends up retaining a little bit of weight, and what we see in studies is that these large amounts of calorie deficits for small little periods of time around exercise tend to cause people to overeat later in the day because they get cravings to make up for that extreme deprivation earlier in the day. So whereas with cycling, it's easier to have a more moderate calorie deficit, with running it tends to be a little bit harder. The bottom line is that both will work. Exercise is like the best thing that you can do for your overall health, your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your body weight, your body composition, and more than anything, what you need to do is find something that you know works for you, and in a lot of cases, that's leaning more towards what you enjoy. So if you enjoy running more, run more. If you enjoy cycling more, cycle more. Don't stress about getting it exactly right, but just know that there are some of these factors that you have to keep in mind, that if you are running, maybe err on the side of caution with your intensity and keep your heart rate low. Make sure that you are eating enough so you don't overeat later in the day. Make sure those possibly detrimental things that could undo your weight loss with running don't necessarily happen so that you can get the best of both worlds. Now with all of that said, if you want a guideline for what to eat for workouts with what to do day to day, we have an app for that. You can go to app.mymotive.com where you can get all of your training for running races are coming in there soon, triathlons are in there right now, your strength training, your yoga, and guidelines for what you should be taking to get the most out of every single workout nutritionally. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.